Hi, in this video I'm going to create custom environments in MATLAB for reinforcement learning. In the previous videos I show how to use reinforcement, reinforcement learning in MATLAB and Simulink using existing environments. And as I mentioned then, the agent is responsible for taking an action based on the observation and the reward. And the environment is responsible for providing the observation and the reward. So we focus on uh, then on creating the agent using actor, critics, and things like that. But now in this video, I'm going to focus on the environment. In, in the previous video, uh, you saw how to create an environment in Simulink. It's just a matter of associating the environment with the Simulink model. So it's quite easy. Simulink pro provides a, an easy environment of creating a dynamics for the model. You can use uh, integrator blocks, uh, and all sorts of blocks to simulate the dynamics of the environment. That's that's pretty trivial in there. But uh, in this uh, video, I'm going to focus how to do it in MATLAB. OK, so I'm going to, uh, in this video, we're going to use the, the environment of a card pole uh, balancing problem. And the problem is quite simple. You have a, a pole that has an angle. And when you, when you have an angle, the gravity is going to move the system and the uh, pole can fall, and also the, the car can go out of bounds. So the observations are, are going to be continuous. And, but the actions are going to be discrete, to make uh, the example simple, because you can only have two forces. Uh, one of them to go backwards uh, with a negative 10 Newton force, and going forwards with positive 10 Newton force. So we're going to create this environment in three different ways. One of them is uh, to create a, no, first, first, the environment needs a, at least a two functions. One of them is for reset that determines a, the initial state of the system. In this system, we're going to have a four states, the position of the cart, the velocity of the cart, the, the angle of the pole, and the velocity of the pole. Those are our four in, a, state variables. So that's going to be a vector. So the reset function uh, needs to determine the, the initial values of those four elements. Then uh, the step function is going to determine the next state, the reward, and determine if the system stopped because the pole failed or you went out of bounds or you achieved a triumph. But in this case, uh, you're not going to reach to a goal. The goal is perpetual, keeping the pole balanced. So, but the, the simulation can terminate if you go out of bounds. So the step function is the basically a simulation. Uh, the simulation uh, core uh, is going to provide, uh, we have to provide it, and that's where we model the dynamic system. So we're going to uh, use three different ways of creating this environment to provide that, that logic. Uh, one of them is to provide the names of the functions, of the reset and step function. The other one is to provide function handles using lambdas, uh, anonymous functions in MATLAB. And the third one is using object-oriented programming through classes. OK, so let's create, start with the first method. Just to reiterate again, uh, notice that you can see the agent and the environment as being two separate components that's, that have an, uh, an API to communicate between them. So the observation and the action is the API for them, is the interface. So that's where we start. We start creating the observation, as I mentioned before. We have four elements in the observation, the position of the card, velocity, uh, that's the derivative of, of the position, the angle, and the velocity of the angle, that is the derivative of the angle. So notice uh, that our observation space is continuous. So when for that, we need to create a numeric spec because it's continuous. And the argument is going to be the number of dimensions. We have four elements, so it's a oriented vector of four elements. So we specify for the, 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 the dimensions as an input. So we have that part of the interface. For the action, as I mentioned, it's going to be a discrete space. So there are only two possibilities. Going backwards with a negative 10 Newton force and going forward with a positive 10 Newton force. So for that, a discrete space, we use the RL finite set spec. And instead of specifying the dimensions, we specify all the possible actions. And in this case, we have only two, two actions. And notice also that by default, the lower and upper limit of all those variables are 
going to be from negative infinity to a positive in infinity, so any value is legal for that. Okay, let's create the actions, and now that we have the actions, we have the interface between the agent and the environment. Okay, so first uh, we have to create the reset function. This example already has asset created. So the reset function is pretty trivial. We're going to have a zero initial value for the for the position and the velocity of the position. We're going to have an initial angle that is non-zero and an initial uh, angle velocity of zero. Why non-zero for the angle? Because if you have it in zero, then there nothing's going to happen in the system. The card is balanced and there's nothing to do. But if you have an inclination, then the gravity is going to move the car and then the agent has to take an action to balance it. So that's why we need a non-zero value for that. So we put the four elements into a state and then a, that gives us an initial observation. Notice that the reset function expects to return two values, the initial observation and the log signal with the state. Okay, so that's for the reset. Now let's go to the step function. The step function is going to have the constants for the dynamic system, that is the gravity, the mass, the forces, the, the limits, the rewards as well. We're going to have a simple reward of if the card is not falling, then you have a positive reward of 1. And But if it went out of bounds, you have a, neg a negative a 10 reward. So here's the reward. So if... You have uh, the new, first, uh, you have all of this computation is to compute the new observation uh, using uh, Newtonian equations. So once you get the new observation, the new position, and the new angle, you're going to check did the position went out of bounds? Did the angle went out of bounds? If, if yes, then it's done. And if it's done, you get a penalty for falling, negative 10. And if it is fine, then you have a positive one reward. If you want to make this reward better, you can also uh, basically have a reward proportional to how close the angle is to zero because you want to balance uh, the, the, the pole in the card. But anyway, the, the, the point here is to show how this environment is created. And from the log signals, you take the, the observation. So you can see in the API of the step function that you expect the action that is going to come from the agent and you get the observation, the all observation. So based on the state, the state and the action, the environment is going to compute the next observation, the next state, which is the same as the next observation, is going to give you the reward as I show now, and it's going to tell you if the simulation stopped either by victory or defeat. Okay, so now uh, the new observation is going to be computed based on these Newtonian equations. So we get the current state. We get the current position, the current uh, angle, and the velocity. And for computing the next position and the next velocity, we're going to use the Euler equations, which is a way of integrating the differential equations of the Newtonian equations. So uh, for that, uh, basically the acceleration uh, determines the new velocity, and the velocity determines the new position. So in the Euler integration, it's quite easy. You have the sample time, and you multiply it by the velocity, uh, the positional velocity, and you get the new position. You multiply the, the sample time, the derivative, the derivative of the acceleration, which is the derivative of the velocity, by the sample time, the time dimension is canceled, and you get the velocity. So And the same thing for the angle. You multiply the derivative of the angle and by the sample time, and you get the new angle. Multiply the acceleration by a sample time, you get the new velocity. So that's that's a Euler integration to integrate the the differential equations in here. Okay, so the only thing that you really need to compute in this environment is the acceleration, and the acceleration depends on the forces. So in the environment, you're gonna have a couple of forces. One of them is the gravity that is gonna go against you because of the pole is in balance, and the other one is the the force that the agent it puts on the car to balance the car, which is the negative 10 and positive 10 newton. That is going to come from the agent, and you get the force in here. Then comes, a, so you basically, based on the system mass and the force, you get uh, the 
based on the angle, you get the, the effect of that force of the card in the system. But also you have the gravity and you have an angle to that gravity force. So both of them are uh, put together and based on the system mass, uh, using the new uh, force equal to mass, uh, equal to mass multiplied by acceleration, then use that formula and get the acceleration. And then you get, a, with a similar way, you get the acceleration for the angle, acceleration for the position. And with that, you determine the next state. And now uh, you put it into a return structure, but also put it into the next observation. So you provide the next observation, the reward, and if it is done. So with that, uh, you have a, your function, your step function. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there actually, okay. Now that you have the API, the observation object, the action object, and the names uh, of the step function and the reset function, use the RL function environment to create your environment. Okay, so now we have our environment with this function. But there's another way, as I mentioned, uh, it's kind of bad uh, programming practice to, I mean, I mean, sometimes in programming it's convenient to parameterize this, because, uh, for example, if you want to, of course, if you want a different environment with different constants, you don't want to modify the code, so you want to parameterize. And for that, the lambdas are going to help us, because lambdas, are, uh, the function pointers, are going to allow us to parameterize it. So we have a variant of the uh, function in here that takes also the action, the, the previous observation, and it gives us the same outputs. The new observation reward is done, but we also receive uh, another parameter which is the, the constants. So notice that uh, the constants are not here anymore. And the, the code is exactly the same. The only thing is that the, the constants were parameterized. Okay, so now let's create the lambdas. Uh, first, we create the, the structure with the constants of gravity, mass, uh, limits, etc. Let's just create that. And now uh, let's create a lambda for the reset. The reset doesn't have any input argument, so we don't have to specify it in the lambda. So that's simple. We just invoke the function. For the step function, the environment is expecting to pass the action and the log signal. So we have to specify those inputs. And we just pass it forward to the function that we just saw, the new one. But in addition, we pass the environment. So the lambda is going to capture all of these values and create a new function, and you don't have to pass them anymore. So now the Lambda effectively customizes the dynamic system for new constant values. And now we use the same function, RL function environment, which is uh, overloaded to get the handles, the Lambda functions and the anonymous functions in here. So we pass the same observation object, the same action object, but with a step and reset handle. And with that, uh, we get the environment. So let's test, test them. Okay, so first uh, we're gonna, uh, for random seed uh, to have the same results, we're gonna call the reset function. And the reset function is gonna give us uh, the initial angle to be non zero and the, the rest is zero. So let's invoke the, the next observation. And we can see that the initial angle doesn't change, neither the position stays in zero. That is because the previous velocities were zero. So the positions do not change. But now we have non-zero velocities. So we expect to have a different a position and angle. Now you can see that the angle and position change. So uh, that's for the first environment. And for the second environment, let's uh, run it also. And we should get, and we do get uh, the, same, the same values for both. Yeah, so we get exactly to the same place. So those, those are two methods of creating environments, but uh, sometimes object-oriented programming uh, can help organize the code better. And for that, uh, MATLAB uh, offers this function RL create environment template. And this is gonna create a class that represents an environment in reinforcement learning. So by, uh, it is done, uh, first uh, let's save it. We save it and we just take the name that I suggest and it extends the reinforcement learning environment, MATLAB environment. So this class is effective at uh, a MATLAB environment. So when you instantiate the class, you're gonna get a, a reinforcement learning environment. And you can see that the properties contains all the constants of gravity and things like that. Of course, uh, you can uh, 
change the constructor in here to take the constants if we want to uh, do the same trick that we used for uh, the previous environment. Okay, so in here, notice that we, in the constructor, we create the observation object and the action object in the same way that we did before, and we pass it to the upper class, the parent class constructor, to, so that it can be integrated, So and now we have the environment created. We have the step function in here, uh, which is also parameterized, and basically, it's the same logic. We have the same reset function. We have a getter methods for all the properties that we have. We have this plot method that helps in visualization. And also this is this can help in visualization. Okay, so I'm going to create the uh, include both of these examples in the description of, of this video. Uh, you can click on them for more details, but let's just instantiate uh, the class. Just have to take the, the name of the class and call the constructor. And that's it. You have the environment. And now that you have the environment, you can use the same functions in here. Notice that it's the same name. So, um, yeah, so it's the same name in here. So we can just initiate the randomization seed, get the initial uh, states. Whoops. So, yeah, we get the same initial states. And now let's just run it. And we get exactly the same results. So those are uh, ways uh, to, to recap. Uh, we created reinforcement learning environments in three different ways. And we use we use it to, to simulate a carpool balancing environment, but this can also be used uh, to create a, uh, a simulate uh, the dynamics of a robot walking or something like that. Uh, of course, you in this example, we did uh, our own a dynamic uh, forces calculation, but you can use it uh, to integrate to another simulation environment. Uh, that basically, this is a way that you can integrate external simulation environment and use the reinforcement learning infrastructure that MATLAB has. And of course, an alternative of doing this, uh, which probably will be more easy, is to use Simulink because you can model this dynamic environment with just a few blocks in Simulink. So that's a, a different alternatives of using reinforcement learning in MATLAB. Okay, that's all for the video. Thank you very much.